Fabio, I we have a full house, and um, I just saw the the master Perry Cooper is in the room. I'm, sure <laughs> I'm so you would glad like about to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 sincerely very very honored. <laughs> you can imagine that, right? <laughs> Hello, Fabio. Hello, B. Hi, Perry. I'm, re I'm really honored to have you here in the crowd, <laughs> in the my group. Honor. My honor, Fabio. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so I think we, we're four minutes. There's still some some um, guests popping in, so I'll I'll just keep uh, working on that. Uh, but I think I'm going to uh, introduce you. So. Um, since we have half of Italy uh, with <laughs> us, I should start by saying ciao Italia. Um, good evening all. Uh, if you're based in, in, in Greenwich time or nearby, um, may I start by asking you to, to mute and turn off cameras just for our optimized bandwidth. Um, um, thanks. But do please turn uh, your cameras on. Uh, when we do the discussion, it's always good to have contact, visual contact in, in nowadays. Um, I am delighted to introduce Fabio Barilari, uh, our guest tonight. Uh, Fabio is um, an Italian architect and brilliant illustrator. And, and he uh, thinks that falling out, which I found this and I, I had to, to clip into to my introduction, so um, he thinks that falling in love with a place is like <laughs> falling in love with someone. Uh, it happens in the same way and can take the same time. It's irrational, intimate, and intangible. Fabio is well known for his illustrations depicting architecture of cities, uh, its streets, squares, as well as designed objects, spontaneous objects, and details. Uh, all those things which define the character and personality of a place and shape the mood of people passing by, even if so briefly. Uh, Fabio graduated with honors with uh, publication of his thesis in architecture and urban design at the University of Rome. Uh, he is a member of the Board of Architects of Rome since 1996. As an architect, he is specialized in complex architectural and urban structures. Uh, he has collaborated with important studios such as uh, Riccardo Morandi, one of the leading international figures in modern engineering, Massimiliano Fuxas, uh, with whom he won the international competition for the new Congress Center of Rome, La Nuvola, uh, and the architect Manfredi uh, Nicoletti, for the project of New Hall of Justice of Arenzo. Uh, in 1996, he founded the studio Fabio Barilari uh, Architecti, uh, which over the years developed numerous projects working across all scales of intervention. Uh, the studio has been awarded and shortlisted in several national and international uh, architectural competitions, and it was awarded the first prize in NARC both in 2000 and 2010. Uh, his projects have been published worldwide and has have been exhibited around the world in places like the Biennale of Young European Artists of the Mediterranean in 1999 and the Biennale de Venezia, both in 2000 and 2010. In 2012, the studio was selected to represent the Board of Architects of Rome in the Triennale di Architettura held in Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, in 2013, the project Picture House was selected for the Golden Medal for the Italian Architecture in the Triennale di Milano. Uh, Fabio has taught uh, architectural and urban design uh, and theory, history of architecture, drawing at La Sapienza University, Cornell, Un Cornell University, Iowa State University, and California Polytechnic in Rome. He teaches in the courses of modern life and drawing at Arcadia University Rome since 2012. And I now know that he has just started a position at Quasar. Um, Fabio, uh, as an illustrator, his work extends from a collaboration with the Goethe Institute on a research of the main German cities in their relation with the ongoing program of new public libraries in Germany. Uh, from that to the Board of Architects of Rome, AR Magazine, 
Uh, his illustrations and paintings have been exhibited and published in Italy, France, Germany, Spain, UK, Hong I Kong, think it's China, enough, Bea. <laughs> so South Korea, Ukraine, and the US Embassy. Uh, and one more thing uh, that this is close to home here, his painting, 30 Nordi, is currently on show in the exhibition Sachi Screen at Sachi Gallery in London. Uh, please join me in welcoming Fabio to our Archizum tonight. To you, Fabio. Thank you so much. I hope that uh, what I'm going to present <laughs> will be longer than this. <laughs> Thank you so much, really, really. Um, and um, okay, I, I want, I definitely want to start thanking you so deeply uh, and so much about this invitation. I was, as I was saying to you uh, when we started uh, this communication before, uh, I'm sincerely honored to be included in this. Uh, really very good and very um, uh, a, a beautiful list of uh, very talented colleagues uh, and uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm truly honored about that uh, and uh, also I have to say thank you so much for organizing this series of lectures because I'm following some of them in some other occasions uh, I'm following uh, when you post them uh, on YouTube uh, and I, I truly think uh, that is this is such a good project uh, in this COVID period uh, to have a good relationship with uh, other colleagues uh, and to talk with students uh, uh, I mean not only in the city where you are working uh, but also abroad so I have this uh, ha the possibility to have these uh, uh, interactions uh, uh, through the media and through the internet. Uh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm sincerely honored and in the meantime, uh, I, I'm, I'm thank, I'm re I really th thank you for the whole project, uh, Bea. Um, I have seen some names here, <laughs> and uh, like Perry Cooper, for example, for which I'm truly honored uh, to have them here and uh, I hope they, they will, you all, you will like the presentation. So I start with this presentation and um, okay, let, uh, let move on. Uh, I, I think I have to share the screen, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know if you, do you hear me? I can hear you try. It's, it's. Okay. I just have to start, uh, sorry, sharing the, yeah, sharing the, the, the this. Yeah. Okay, let's start. Do you see the screen? Yes, all good. Okay. Okay, let me start with this. Uh, um, I, 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 when you asked me uh, to, 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 to make a lecture, I thought about what could be a good theme. Uh, and of course, talking uh, uh, about you, Bea, and uh, uh, what, what are your interests, I really immediately thought about the, uh, the, 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 the action of drawing it could be a good uh, path uh, uh, to moving on. So I, I, I started to, to put a, a, um, together a series of ideas about the act of, drawings, uh, of drawing. So I thought uh, to make a lecture uh, in which you will find a path uh, which is not straight to the point. I mean, it, it, I, I will move across different steps. Uh, basically, um, I invite everyone to keep the focus on the act of drawing. And in particular, I'm particularly interested, particularly interested uh, in the act of uh, hand drawing, free hand drawing. Uh, I tell you from now, I'm sorry for my English, I, would, I'm, I might make my, some mistakes. Uh, should you not understand something, I will be very pleased uh, to, to repeat or to clarify everything I'm going to say. Um, I start everything uh, uh, from this stone, um, because this stone so far is the most ancient drawing uh, uh, discovered in the world. It's dated back uh, 60, uh, sorry, 70,000 years ago. It was found uh, pretty um, recently in, uh, in the 80s, if I'm not wrong, uh, in the Blombos Cave in South Africa. These are just few red marks uh, on the stone, but uh, the archaeologists uh, found uh, some shells uh, uh, with some pigment inside those shells. Uh, so this means that this is the starting point of drawing so far in the world. I'm going to present something. I mean, this is just an explanation of what they have found. And um, 
if we want to talk about uh, the written words, uh, this is the first uh, example of written words. Uh, so to, uh, talking about drawing, uh, uh, we, we, we went uh, um, 70,000 years ago. Talking about words or something similar to words, uh, we, are, we have to talk back, to go back uh, to 3,500 3, before Christ uh, with this limestone quiche tablet from summer uh, uh, with pictor pictographic writing uh, and uh, this continued uh, also in the Egyptian uh, culture uh, so this is dated back uh, to 2050 around uh, 2050 before Christ uh, uh, the gatekeeper Mahati and uh, actually it was just a series of drawings uh, until that moment uh, we have to, in, in the meantime uh, um, also, this one has been rec quite recently discovered. This is the Chiribequete uh, in Colombia, in the Amazon uh, forest, uh, dated back uh, to 20,000 years uh, uh, ago. And they found more than 75 cave paintings. Uh, they call now this uh, the Sistine Chapel of the Amazonia, um, with beautiful paintings representing uh, the animals and the the, the, the plants, trees, and so on, the geography of the place. This was happening everywhere in the world, much, much before then the first word was uh, written every, uh, in any piece, whether a place, whether it was a, a piece of uh, stone or a piece of paper. These were some, uh, uh, these are some beautiful uh, drawings uh, um, in, uh, in Australia, in, uh, in the Northern Territory, uh, dated back 20,000 years ago. And uh, they had multiple purposes uh, because basically the, in this case, for example, this fish represents uh, the interior of the, of the fish. Not, so not just the shape of the fish, but also the interior because they had the purpose to uh, give information uh, to the travelers uh, who were approaching the area to what they could find and what they could eat and not eat, for example. So it was a very functional uh, uh, meaning for this drawing. In some other cases, there were religious meanings. Uh, we are talking about 18,000 18, years ago uh, in the same area in the Kakadu National Park, uh, which is a huge, Im immense uh, uh, park in the north of, uh, uh, northeast of, uh, of Australia. And in some cases, uh, the drawing on the right side, uh, I have the impression, uh, to be honest, I'm not an archaeologist, but I have the impression of a, source, of a sort of... Uh, uh, artistic intention, I would say, because this is a man, uh, maybe, I don't know, um, dancing or acting, uh, uh, a hunter probably, but uh, the shape of this man uh, is very, very interesting. There's no need to mention the Lascaux cave 17,000 years ago. Uh, they are called uh, the Sistine Chapel of the Paleolithic era. It's like if the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo has become a sort of a, a metric unit uh, in order to, 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 to talk about everything that's been produced in the history of the world uh, in the arts. And uh, it's interesting, this photo, because uh, there is a man inside, so you can see the, sh the, the, the sides of these drawings uh, 17,000 years ago. There are over 600 parietal wall paintings. Uh, now we have to jump uh, at uh, the ninth century before Christ uh, to have these first uh, examples of uh, written words, uh, uh, like the Phoenician votive stele from Nora in Sardinia, for example, uh, which is, is, has never been clearly translated so far. And the much more, much more recent uh, um, stone on the right side, uh, discovered in uh, near Perugia in Italy again, uh, which is dated back in the third century before Christ. It's just a legal contract, by the way, the, the, this uh, piece of stone here among two families. Uh, um, moving on, uh, hold on just a moment. Uh, uh, I, I, I jump just a few years uh, and, uh, and I, I, I go straight to the uh, uh, 1980s, uh, <laughs> um, th with this quote uh, that I always loved so much, uh, drawing is still basically the same as it has been since prehistoric times. It brings together man and the world. It lives through magic. Now, this word, these words, it lives through magic, uh, they are so true. Uh, 
because basically that's why I'm, I, I decided to, 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 to focus uh, on the hand drawing, on the act of hand drawing, uh, free hand drawing maybe even more, uh, because in the, mo in the right moment in which you put your pen or your pencil on a piece of paper, you create something that didn't exist until that moment. So there is something magical because sometimes, and this uh, I can t I can say this, but I think that everyone that uh, works uh, in paintings and drawings uh, and and so on and, uh, knows that uh, when you start to draw, very often you even don't know what you are going to draw. Uh, it's something that comes out by itself. So. I start with um, some of my drawings, and I'm not going to repeat <laughs> what you very kindly said, uh, Bea, the in the presentation, uh, the, the quote, falling in love with a place and so on. This was the, I wrote these words uh, uh, in, occasion of, um, in the occasion of an, um, an, um, an exhibition which was very important for me here in Rome years ago, uh, which was titled the Senso delle cose, the sense of things. Uh, I just want to mention a little quote uh, that presented the, the exhibition um, from Lou Reed. Is uh, there's a bit of magic in everything, and then some loss to even things out. Uh, I, uh, Lou Reed. I, I I mean I love music, uh, a lot of music, and Lou Reed is among my favorite uh, uh, composers. Um, so this is a little corner of Rome. Uh, and I'm going to talk about different uh, approaches in drawing. Uh, uh, there is a, a narrative approach. Uh, and the narrative approach means that I, I, I invite you to consider these drawings uh, as a sort of uh, texts made of words uh, talking about these places uh, for the reasons that I presented so far. I mean, the, the act of drawing is much, much more ancient than the act of writing uh, uh, words. Um, and uh, first of all, I have to say I enjoy so much drawing. Uh, so, I mean, I, I didn't have to explain to myself why to do this. I like to do this and I do it. Uh, that's it. But then uh, when I had to rationalize what was the function in architecture, I thought that uh, this was, uh, it took a while for me to understand this. This was my way to write about places. Uh, and uh, I had in my mind a book by Giancarlo De Carlo. Uh, Giancarlo De Carlo has been a great architect, one of my favorite architects, Italian architects for, uh, for sure. He, he, he wrote a book, Nelle Città del Mondo, in the, in the cities of the world. Uh, this is something related with that kind of approach. Uh, it's a book, of, oh, oh, well, it pretends to be a sort of book uh, about architecture of the cities. Uh, so these are some of my drawings about Rome. Uh, Rome is the city where I was born and where I live uh, and where I work. Uh, and uh, and uh, actually it, it is, is a unique city. And uh, the, probably there's no need to say this, uh, but uh, it's important to remember every, while, uh, every now and then, especially if you live inside this city, because you have so many reasons to to, to be upset and uh, I mean, uh, but, uh, but you, you must remember, sometimes you must stop for a while and think about what kind of beauty you have in this historical center. And uh, this doesn't mean, I mean, in, in this case, on the right side, you see a, a little detail. I love these little, very run down details, uh, not just in Rome, everywhere. I, I, I tend to make a lot of drawings like this uh, with the composition, with the shadows, uh, but these are shadows of Rome. So I would say that Rome is, is, is a city with very deep shadows, uh, both, uh, uh, physically speaking and historically speaking. Um, in this kind of drawings, uh, talking about Rome and cities like Rome, uh, I use a pen, watercolor and ink with brush. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in, uh, this is Campo dei Fiori, in uh, presenting uh, the beautiful uh, soft uh, tones of colors of the plasters of Rome. Uh, I, I, I really love them uh, with specifically moment of the day there are with some light, uh, the sunlight, uh, they are beautiful colors. Uh, and I would like to say something very quickly about the technique of these drawings. Uh, I draw directly with a pen uh, without uh, uh, a first uh, layer of pencil. This is a, uh, it has a specific, two specific purposes. The first one is to train my hand and to train myself uh, in order to uh, control 
every single line of the drawing. In the meantime, I'm conscious that I'm going to make mistakes, uh, errors, and so on. And uh, I'm very much interested in keeping these mistakes uh, as part of the whole process, of, of the whole process till the end of the, of the drawing. And uh, a city like Rome, many other cities, uh, they allow this uh, kind of action. And uh, this kind of action actually creates uh, so much of the mood of that place for myself. I'm, I, I don't pretend that everyone feel the same. I'm talking about myself, of course, when I say that I feel Rome in this way. These are some other examples of Rome. And uh, then I jump to a, a completely different locations. And this is an occasion for me to talk about one point. I, in the same re, uh, way in which you can't use the same structure of uh, phrases and words, uh, to, to, to describe uh, an history of love, for example, and a crime, you have to use different words. I feel the need to change a technique when I change the location that I want to talk about. Um, this matches very well with my personal approach, which, uh, which is, uh, I al I've always been very curious about all the different techniques. Um, I have to say I made classical studies uh, and about drawing, about everything is painting and drawing. I'm completely self-trained. So I learned step by step uh, making mistakes and uh, learning uh, from every single technique uh, uh, what could be the potential. So I made the, the drawing on the left side uh, is San Francisco, your city bear. And um, it's, a, it's a little corner of San Francisco. Uh, and um, I, I have to say, in this kind of drawing, I like, I like, this doesn't mean that this is beautiful, but I like it very much for myself, uh, the, the quality of the result. But I didn't like at all uh, the relationship with the city. I didn't feel the city in this drawing. So I decided to change completely the technique uh, for San Francisco, I'm going to show something later, and adopt this kind of technique uh, for another city, which is uh, Chicago. In Chicago, I made some drawings, uh, like everywhere I go, and this is another drawing of Chicago, and this uh, alterate uh, sense of perspective made me both the feeling of, uh, well, when you are, especially when you're a tourist, you arrive in a place and you, you in this city, you move your head constantly watching above, down, everywhere. And uh, you, you, you miss completely the sense of uh, verticality of these buildings. In the meantime, I couldn't adopt uh, the same technique that I adopt in Rome because uh, here everything is built in concrete and, uh, uh, and uh, metal. So all the lines need to, they don't accept mistakes some, somehow. I use a completely different technique uh, uh, to, to represent uh, for myself again, uh, the San Francisco. I found uh, a much closer, much, much closer feeling uh, uh, with the mood that I had in that city in San Francisco using this different technique. And I, I started to make a series of drawings. Uh, now, let's jump uh, back in Italy, this is Naples. Uh, I, I sincerely, I mean, I, I, I have always loved so much Naples, uh, but it took me so much time to understand how to relate with this city. And um, in particular, it came in my mind uh, one day, one song, uh, which is a, a Neapolitan song very f from a very famous uh, artist, unfortunately died uh, years ago, uh, Pino Daniele, Who's uh, one of the best songs he made was uh, Napoli. Uh, during the song, he says very often, uh, Nap uh, Naples is a thou thousands of colors, uh, uh, is made of a thousands of colors, or something like that. So, uh, listening to that beautiful song, I don't hear, I don't listen to many Italian um, uh, songs and uh, music, but the, that artist, I love particularly that artist and that song I really think is one of the most beautiful songs in the last decades in Italy. Uh, I thought, okay, let me try to depict Naples uh, using just one color, what, what might happen? And I started to use uh, the brush and the ink. Uh, so drawing with the brush and the ink. This is the deep center of Naples. So for those who, uh, of you who know Naples, this is uh, San Gregorio Armeno. So it's just a, a little courtyard uh, in the deep center of Naples. After this drawing, uh, 
I felt immediately the, 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 um, uh, that I could continue on and on. And I started to make an incredible, no a, a huge number of drawings of Naples because I felt myself in contact with that city using the right words to describe that city. So I'm, I, I present here just a couple of these drawings, but I made really a lot of these drawings about Naples. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, I, just to let you know, this is a, uh, the historical center of Naples is composed, I think, I'm not sure, I think is uh, 17 different areas. Uh, and the whole historical center of, of Naples, so sorry, is, um, is declared UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, and I think that is the biggest UNESCO World Heritage in Europe uh, for, this, for the cities, for the historical centers. And, um, I mean, it's something, uh, it's a different city from all the others. Uh, most probably is the most anarchic city I, I've met so far. Uh, these are some details and I love the details. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I think uh, that you, if you know Naples, you could recognize that city, that, that beautiful city from some of these details. We jump on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea, and this is in Morocco. This is one of my favorite cities I've ever visited. There is uh, Essaouira in Morocco on the Atlantic coast. And uh, I thought that, that could be a good solution using exactly the same technique of uh, Naples. Uh, there's so much to say about the city, but I, I would go out of the path of the lecture. Um, I needed to use the color in this occasion. They, it's one specific reason. When I was there, uh, you, have to, you have to know that in the mainland behind the, the, uh, the, Esawira, uh, the, the, the town of Esawira, there is the Sahara Desert. So when there is a, a windy period, uh, uh, all the sand of the Sahara moves towards the city and covers these beautiful white walls, uh, but covers everything. This city, is, this city in particular is, 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 is a powerful location. Uh, Orson Welles filmed this, uh, the, his Otello here in 19, I think, 56 or something around. And uh, Ridley Scott filmed the um, Crusades uh, much later. But I mean, it has been used as in several beautiful films. So this beautiful color of the Sahara Desert uh, was coloring everywhere. The sea, the sea itself, the water itself was this okra color, and the walls and the and the and the sky everywhere was was uh, there was a sort of a layer of a very soft tone, but uh, going towards the yellowish color. And so I wanted definitely to capture that. Going to another country, this is Greece. And uh, I don't know if you have ever been in Greece, but uh, I'm, I'm inviting everyone uh, who has never been in Greece to go there as soon as possible, because it's, uh, for me, it's a, it's a sort of heaven on earth, in, one, uh, in particular, uh, the islands, but not only the islands. Um, in Greece, uh, when I discovered Greece, I started to go back again and again, and for, now it's been many years that I'm going there. And uh, in Greece, I, I needed to, to change again the kind of technique. I felt this, this need. And little by little, I, I started to took off the lines, leaving just the colors. And leaving the colors means that I left behind the horizon, even the horizon line in, in several drawings. And uh, you have this sense, uh, in, when you are there, you have this sense of complete peace uh, and uh, everything is so smooth. Finally, I found that this new technique, which is, uh, they are a sort of uh, ch colored charcoals. Uh, and I started to make a series of drawings uh, uh, and illustrations about, uh, uh, I mean, it's, everything there in Greece is made of nothing. Just a couple of colors uh, and nothing else really. And uh, whether you are talking about uh, uh, the colors, uh, the architecture, or uh, even the food, it's very simple, the food, but it's so good. Everything is so welcoming for everyone. When I went for the, uh, to, I made these two trips for the, um, around Germany for the Goethe Institute, uh, um, I started from Berlin. So this is the Holocaust Memorial in uh, Berlin from Peter Eisenman. I went in Berlin uh, with a specific idea. That was probably the, the only occasion which I decided to go in Berlin and started to talk just in black and white uh, using just the shadows or almost just the shadows. I present only this 
series of uh, drawings. Uh, um, again, uh, working just with the hand, so allowing the mistakes uh, to enter in the drawing. Um, I have to say that pretty soon I couldn't avoid it to start to, to work with the watercolors and so on because I mean it's a passion and in this, in this, in, uh, it's pretty difficult to get out from a passion and deciding okay I want to stay on this straight path so this is another corner of, of uh, Berlin uh, and this is Leipzig uh, again in in in, um, in Germany in the ex east part of the, of Germany I loved in several occasions the the, the mood and of course this kind of storytelling uh, can become uh, a real storytelling, so a sort of graphic novel uh, in which something more is presented. Uh, even people can enter. So uh, until that moment, this moment, you didn't find people. Um, and uh, so I'm just presenting a couple of examples of this uh, way of storytelling, the, 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 the graphic novels. So I would like to stop this first action of drawings uh, this first presentation about the meaning of drawing uh, with this quote, uh, which is for me is a beautiful quote. I, I suppose that several of you know this uh, by Italo Calvino from the, the book The Invisible Cities. Arriving in every new city, a traveler rediscovers a part of his past that he didn't think he still had. The strangeness of who you no longer are or what you no longer possess uh, is waiting for you at the doorstep of strange, unpossessed lands. So uh, I, I, I love these words. I will uh, put some quotes. I, I put some other quotes of Idalo Calvino, and I thought it was a good quote to end this first part of the lecture. These are some of my notebooks, uh, of my sketchbooks. Uh, uh, it's a very nice company having a sketchbook everywhere you go. This is an invitation for the students, of course. Uh, it's a suggestion for the students. Uh, uh, right now, I think I have, uh, the last time I counted, there were more than 80s, than 80, sorry. Um, and they are a good company and they're a beautiful memory uh, moving on in the, with the, year, the years. A new quote by Le Corbusier, I prefer, Drawing to talking. Drawing is faster and leaves less room for lies. Uh, uh, there's no need to explain this. Uh, um, and I start to, to, to talk about a different kind of um, action for the drawings, uh, uh, which is uh, the first one was a narrative action, a nar narrative function. In this case, I start to talk about the, the design of architecture, architectural design. And uh, in this way, uh, in this occasion, I had to make, uh, this was pretty recently, uh, just a few months before the, the lockdown. So everything was stopped by the lockdown in the world. This was an occasion for, uh, uh, for a project uh, in Kenya, in, uh, in a Maasai community uh, in the middle of nowhere in Kenya. I didn't mention one point uh, and I, I told, uh, I, I said to Bea that I was going to mention this at the beginning. I forgot about this. Uh, when I started to, 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 to study architecture, my deep, uh, my deep uh, thought was that architecture is only built. Uh, only, uh, the, uh, I mean, everything else is not architecture. This was, I'm not saying that this is my statement. I'm saying that I started from that point of view. Uh, so I started to, to, to study, in particular from, I remember Alvar Aalto was my first love uh, in architecture, and then I moved on. Um, but uh, I always thought that, about architecture as a built fact, a built action. So now I enter in this action, the built, the, something that has, was built or has, has to be built. This, this is a school uh, and in the middle of nowhere. So I started to talk about uh, how, how can I manage uh, a, a, a project for this little school where there is no, nothing at all everywhere around there for hundreds of kilometers. And I, I simply discovered that this is the traditional um, community organization, uh, little villages or even little houses in the, in the whole area. Uh, this is a, a nomadic uh, culture. In this case, uh, the Lenko Bay community is a semi-nomadic, so they tend to spend a long periods of the year in the same place. And that's why they decided, uh, I mean, another person from the uh, United States, they, they contacted me uh, to decide to make a little structure 
architecture with multifunctions inside, but in particular, uh, that could work as a school. So I wanted to talk uh, very briefly about these drawings. And these drawings uh, are drawings about uh, think, uh, thinking about architecture, thinking about a specific project uh, and letting uh, your brain moving uh, in, the most in the most free uh, way uh, in the development of, a, of an idea about th that target. Uh, so it's, not, it's nothing abstract. You have specific functions, but in the meantime, you have to allow your brain to move on on the paper. And I say this because this, as you see, there are a lot of drawings uh, with specific uh, architectural ideas. But then moving around, as I told you, I like very much drawing in general. Uh, I made this drawing. Uh, and when I made this drawing, I had, uh, and I have, because everything was stopped by the, the COVID. I, I hope it will continue later. Um, uh, when I made this drawing, I thought that uh, this could be a good idea to make a, a, an elevation for this, this school. And uh, for this reason, uh, this became uh, the design of the shutters uh, uh, and of the windows uh, on, the, on the little buildings. Uh, and this you can see here, this was the idea. And uh, I thought that uh, something really beautiful, amazing, absolutely beautiful were the colors of these uh, uh, clothes. So there was not just a, a rhythm in the, in, in the drawing of the, of the elevation, there was also a, a beautiful sense of colors. And uh, we thought to, to, to manage this uh, uh, in order also to include the community there to participate to the, uh, in a sort of participated uh, uh, process to the architecture. So to leave them uh, to paint these uh, uh, shutters uh, using their own, the, their, their colors, the colors of, of their tradition. But this is thanks to, to that little, very little drawing that I made uh, in a completely irrational way. So this lesson was, uh, the title is uh, Intangible Reality. Basically, it seems something, something opposite to the other one, towards one opposite on the other one. But uh, uh, the intangible is something that comes out from your mind sometimes uh, and is completely irrational and then it, it becomes rational and it becomes tangible just a little bit later if you start to build that. So this uh, is so much related with the act of drawing and that's why I'm presenting all this kind of different, uh, um, let's say directions that you can, uh, in which you can use the drawing. So one, this is another example. This is just for an indoor, uh, an interior, uh, um, the project uh, is an apartment here in Rome. You can see all the notes and so on. Uh, I, I will not go too far, but I just wanted to present this little sketch. Uh, in the beginning, I thought, uh, and this was actually, it was approved by the client uh, to cover all the walls uh, with metal. Uh, and, um, and it was approved. I was pretty surprised about that. Uh, I was so surprised that the, 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 the next meeting, uh, I changed my idea and I proposed then to cover with, uh, with wood. And this was the final result of this uh, solution. Because I th honestly, after they uh, uh, approved the, the idea, I liked very much that mat material, but then I thought, okay, you can't go back home every, every single day. This is an apartment of uh, less than 100 square meters. Uh, you can't go back every, more, every day and uh, uh, entering in a place which is completely covered or almost completely covered by metal. It's, it is not welcoming, it is not uh, cozy, it's not uh, warm. So that's why I decided to change the, 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 and they had accepted immediately also this idea. So I understood that we were very well connected. It's very rare with the clients. Um, this was uh, this is the, uh, the, 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 the apartment completed. Uh, I continue to go and I, I go a little bit, uh, I, I have to check the time. Okay. This is a, a project for a competition. Uh, in this case, it was a competition we, in which we didn't take any um, uh, prize, uh, but uh, I do love the, the whole process. Uh, and I have to say, I, I do appreciate also a lot the, 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 the shape, uh, even if it was just a little bit more than a concept. Uh, it was for the new museum of uh, Vienna. Uh, Vienna is 
quite uh, all the magazines in these last two days, sadly. But uh, in that occasion, I thought uh, we, had, we had to work in a, on a specific location uh, in front of a park close to a very important church. And basically, there is a, a, an existing part of the building from, I think it was from the 50s, and they wanted to cover this uh, and to uh, improve the, 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 the museum. And I thought, okay, what, what good, uh, what, uh, it could be a good uh, opportunity to give an architectural life to this beautiful, beautiful uh, painting uh, from Klimt, uh, by Klimt, sorry. And uh, the, it was asked also uh, to make one Vien room, it was called. Uh, so uh, I thought that this could be a fantastic occasion to take, uh, to create a room with two different glasses and two different windows, uh, one connected with the other one uh, with the keys of these two lovers. Uh, and this could be the fanta the, the, uh, a fantastic idea for uh, for a tribute to, to that painter and uh, for a tribute to that beautiful city. Uh, in the meantime, I thought about this like a sort of cloth that was covering everything and a big step uh, which could become a, a, a public pedestrian step uh, to arrive to, 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 to reach the, the, the Vien room. And uh, this was part of, this is the Vien room room and little by little everything was coming uh, was coming out in the drawings uh, and uh, so the idea of translating also the Klimt gardens uh, the, he made beautiful paintings of uh, gardens uh, almost abstract gardens uh, so the final uh, sorry the final uh, uh, project uh, is this one uh, as you see, once again, I, st I told you that I started from the idea that architecture must be built. I, I, I have not anymore this uh, straight idea, but it's, it's still part of myself. And you will see this in the end of the lecture in particular. So um, this was the, uh, basically I planned everything, we planned everything uh, with uh, these two walks, one parallel to the other one. One is the violet, one is inside the museum. The other one is outside. Uh, you saw in the collage, the Spanish steps. I used this idea uh, to create an, a new sort of Spanish steps uh, in Vien here. Uh, and then uh, a pedestrian walk, a public walk uh, to connect uh, to the Vienna room as well you can connect inside the museum and this was i made these two drawings uh, much earlier than finding the final solution but these two drawings were very uh, helpful for me because i wanted to create uh, outside uh, this series of walks uh, and in particular this golden color which contrasts uh, completely with the dark gray color of the sky, which is you, you can find very often this kind of color in, in Vien. So this kind of uh, enlightening uh, the, sky, the sky of, uh, of uh, Vien, I thought it could be a nice idea. And that was, I, I, I really wanted to create a, a sort of a atmosphere inside the museum, uh, which was full of this golden light uh, inside the museum. So the idea was entering in that kiss. Uh, some, uh, the, the, I think the title we made was entering in Darkus, is uh, the German uh, spelling for the, in the kiss. Uh, and this was, uh, and then, okay, planning the whole garden around uh, as a tribute or, uh, to Klimt. Uh, um, one more quote from one of my most uh, beloved uh, uh, architects uh, ever in the history of architecture, Samuel Mockby, Sambo. For me, it's the act of drawing that allows the end to come into accord with the hurt. I, just, I, don't, have, I, I don't need to explain that. It's just a, a quick note. Now, I would like to jump uh, to the Renaissance, uh, and in particular to this Annunziata, the Virgin, Virgin Annunciate, uh, is dated back in 1476. Uh, uh, this beautiful, incredible painting from Antonello da Messina was made uh, not too many years after the uh, codification, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the discovery of the rules uh, of perspective. Um, what I think is impressive about this painting uh, is everything, first of all. This is a, literally a, psych a, a psychology tricky uh, in, this, in this little painting. Uh, the, the hand that 
protect us, protects us herself. The other hand, that's something, uh, it's doing something like stopping the angel. And you see, you are watching the, the Holy Virgin from the position of the, of, the, of the angel. So the angel, you don't see the angel. You, f you see, you see the, the effects of the angel, the psychological effects effects of the angel and you can see this clearly from the most important part from my point of view of this painting which is the look of the eye which goes in not towards your direction it, it goes in another direction and the other direction is something like an interior direction you you can almost uh, see the thoughts that were moving on in her brain in that moment uh, in which she she was announced uh, about what what would have be, would, would have happened in her life. This incredible step is a new step after the decodification of perspective. So if I go back to the previous uh, slide, I see that, sorry, just a moment. The perspective is completely part of his background. Antonello da Messina didn't know, didn't need to, to learn more more about perspective rules. Uh, you can see this from the pages, for example, and the hand and so on. And he didn't know anything to learn more about the Fleming's, uh, Fla Fla Fleming's uh, uh, technique of painting. Uh, he, he learned everything about that. It was just moving forward, a new step. And the new step was this, is, is about her eyes, is about her look, uh, what was going on in her mind. And something similar, is uh, with a similar un un untouchable reality is the look of the eyes of this girl. The famous photo is this one by Steve McCurry. This is the alternate take uh, uh, also by Steve McCurry. It was taken in 1984. Take a look about these incredible eyes and think about how many things could pass through her mind in that moment. Uh, Steve McCurry had uh, few moments uh, to take the face, uh, the, a picture of the whole face without her cover, cover, covering of the face. This connects me with uh, an, another project uh, we made. Uh, this project was made by me and uh, uh, my brother Alessio. Uh, is, uh, we call that the picture house. Uh, is in the center of Italy. The, uh, we, 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 we had this incredible surrounding uh, around the here and we had uh, english uh, clients uh, it was a lucky o opportunity uh, and we could work uh, relating uh, the house uh, with this uh, amazing uh, landscape in marche is a, is a central region in italy uh, in that occasion the laws uh, were so strict uh, that we couldn't move uh, even one little step uh, in the project. Uh, so this was a great challenge because we wanted to relate with the, with, with the context, uh, but, but we couldn't relate with physically. Physically, we couldn't move uh, in any, any kind of direction. Uh, forget about uh, falling water by um, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, forget about Ville Savoie. Everything was completely stopped by every single rule existing on that territory. So we, we just could start a sort of relationship with the, uh, with the landscape made of look among different con uh, entities, uh, the house on one side, the client in the house and the surroundings. So we create a sort of pattern. And in that occasion, uh, we needed just one drawing. We made just one drawing that was really helpful because it, this little drawing made us thinking about a, a little shop uh, close to our studio for, uh, uh, for frames. And we thought, okay, this could be the, the key to to move on. Uh, this could become a, a sort of game uh, or a relationship of made of looks uh, between the, the architecture and the surroundings and its surroundings. Uh, and in order to have uh, this uh, uh, working in the best way, the interiors had to be the most minimal and abstract uh, that it was possible. So the interiors are what you see here. And this is the view from the interiors uh, from one of the windows, but every single window has its own function and its own level so, so that you can be sitting on the table and you have a, a completely different uh, view uh, rather than if you're walking inside the house. And then this is the, these are some photos of the interiors. 
In this photo, you can see both the interiors and the outside, uh, the surroundings uh, of this uh, amazing countryside around there. Another quote, this is by Picasso, to draw you must you close your eyes and sing. Uh, and this is so true again. I mean, this is a photo, a very famous photo, in which Picasso is basically is drawing with light. So he doesn't know, he, he didn't know what, was he, what he was drawing. Uh, once again, we are still talking about drawing and we are still talking about intangible, uh, something that, that moves from your mind and something that you, could, uh, you, you cannot see. In this case, Picasso was not seeing what he was drawing, but he knew what, he was going, what, what was going on. He knew clearly what was going on. Um, let me jump back to the Renaissance. This is a drawing from Michelangelo. Now, in one of the previous uh, um, lectures, uh, I, I really appreciated very much uh, the lecture of uh, Peter Baldwin, Baldwin. And in his lecture, he said uh, a couple of things that stayed in my mind. The first one was that uh, we, we, are, we are moving in the act of drawing uh, uh, in this last period towards direction uh, for, uh, in which we don't know what's, what's the end of this direction. It's a research. So we pr this was the first thing. We do not pretend answers in this moment from these researchers about drawing. The, f the second point was about uh, the importance of uh, probably finding a new key uh, or, or new kind of drawings uh, to represent architecture in the contemporary age. Now, uh, a project that really struck me when I was a student was this one by uh, Karl Pimmelblau. Um, and I, I just would like to go very quickly in, uh, in, the, in their quote. We think that the drawing in architecture that is the unconscious act which calls logic into question could be the blind spot. The coincidence that is not a coincidence leads us to a method of design in which the drawing becomes important, free from physical constraints without thinking about spatial consequences the drawing comes into being an instant and administrates the building. And when you see the drawing created in an explo explosive moment, you see the superimposition of plan, elevation, and section. Everything is in drawing. And in a furthest quote from uh, Wolf Preaks was, the hand acts as a seismographer, seismograph recording the feelings that the space will evoke. We are still talking about uh, both. Uh, hand drawing and uh, intangible realities uh, that you start to see. A few years later, there was this project by uh, Peter Eisman. I don't want to read because maybe there is too much to read. I'm sorry about this, but this is a beautiful quote uh, from um, Italo Calvino uh, in which to he talks about the, 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 um, the word word, but I erased the, the word and I uh, put the, the word drawing. If you read everything, uh, changing this word, it works perfectly in the, in the meantime. Basically, uh, I, I just say the first, the first part, I think we are always searching for something hidden or merely potential or hypothetical, following its traces whenever they appear on the surface. Uh, and then it moves on. I don't want to go too far, too far. But uh, I, this was the first example of a virtual project in the process of uh, the series of um, the houses the, designed by uh, Peter Eisman. And in my vision, again, as an architect that wants to see built what is his, he is drawing, seeing also the model, the 3D physical model of this virtual house uh, is something that interested me very much. Now, talking about drawing, the act of drawing, uh, in this historical period, uh, I presented the, the house of uh, Peter Eisman is dated back in 1997. We, we are now in 2020. This last 25 years, more or less, 30 years, even less than 30 years, uh, were, uh, were named as the... Um, uh, Revolution Informatica is the, how do you call that in English? I don't remember anymore, but it's, a, it's a, the, the revolution of uh, computer revolution, let's say, with uh, CAD and CAM uh, uh, technologies uh, and softwares and so on. So this made me think in the last years, uh, 
I have to say, uh, you, you mentioned about my thesis. My thesis was uh, one of the very first uh, uh, projects in which uh, I, uh, in our university in Rome was used uh, the presentation uh, uh, of a, a virtual uh, video, so a 3D video. Uh, in 1995, I remember all my all, all the professors in my thesis. Uh, no one of them has nev uh, had never seen before uh, a, a, a video made on it uh, with the computer. I physically I had to bring my computer in the university uh, because there were no computers there. So we are talking about the last 25 years, more or less 30 years, and uh, my position in the last years was uh, okay now. If the, the, the act of drawing is so ancient, uh, what uh, is going to happen now to drawing is uh, it's for sure it will not disappear and it will not disappear as an act of uh, drawing, uh, as an act of uh, designing uh, in architecture. So this makes me feel a, a little bit like the first photo, uh, the period in which this is the first photograph uh, existing, uh, uh, taken, uh, was viewed from the window at La, La Gra. It's dated back in uh, 1826, 27 around. So in the same period, uh, uh, Monet started to paint the impressions, not anymore the reality, but the impressions about the reality. And he was already, uh, someone else that was already on that path was William Turner just a few years before. So we are talking the same time in which uh, painting the reality didn't have any more a sense. Some, there were some new uh, paths opening for, for the act of paintings. And I think that the act of drawing uh, when uh, Baldwin said, uh, said that, that we, we need to find new way of representing architecture, I feel this every, every time I enter in the Pantheon. I think this photo is really horrible, but uh, uh, it represents clearly what is my impression about every single representation of the Pantheon. I used to go there very often by myself, but in particular with my students. Um, and uh, I, you don't know how many times I tried to make hand drawings uh, of the Pantheon uh, uh, or drawings of the Pantheon in general. And you simply are not able to find a, a simple solution or something, a way to depict uh, what you feel inside that that building this is what i mean you you can try to make a series of photos but i mean there's no way you ha you have to experience that so every time this uh, the, there have been a few few examples i found few examples because i was not able to find that something that satisfied me about it, the representation of the pantheon and i started to search on the web i found i knew this but i, I found some images I, I wanted to post about panini in 1745 uh, this is the interior of the pantheon and in my opinion he was not satisfied as well because he made several paintings like this uh, Honestly, you, they are not even close what, about, uh, when, um, to what you feel when you enter in that, uh, in that building. I feel much, a much closer empathy about what I feel in the Pantheon when uh, I see a painting of Ma uh, Mark Rotzko. So this, the, the, there's, there's something that much, must change in the representation of, uh, this, uh, uh, of, uh, of architecture. So I... I I don't want to go too late for you, sorry. Uh, um, I, I, I think uh, that we have to look forward about drawing and we have to look, uh, this was, a, was my, these were my thoughts a few years ago and I started from these thoughts. I think you have to search uh, for new directions about drawings. And uh, I was very, I remember I studied, uh, I was very curious about uh, Mark Tobey uh, Mark Tobey was uh, li uh, working and living in the same period of uh, uh, Pollock, but uh, just recently I discovered that he, he started to make these drawings. Uh, they, are, they are quite little in the sides before then Rochko, uh, then uh, sorry, then Pollock, and they are. They, he was very well connected uh, with the Far East uh, um, religions, uh, philosophies, uh, and. Uh, even the, the art of calligraphy. So the act of putting together an interior, an, in, uh, an entire Cosmo, interior Cosmo, and putting it on paper outside. It's very, it's, it's impressive if you see 
this is by Pollock, and this was made by uh, Mark Tobey. This is a little bit later, but Mark Tobey arrived to this uh, kind of uh, um, painting uh, and the uh, grammar of painting before then Rothko, from what I'm studying, because uh, Mark Tobey uh, started to, beca to become uh, more studied uh, a little bit mu much later, much, it's much, much la less famous than uh, Pollock. And actually I discovered pretty later that uh, one of the most important uh, topics uh, for uh, Mark Tobey was the city itself, the dynamics of the city. So you can see like for the Mondrian uh, series of paintings starting from the tree, arriving to the total abstraction of a tree, the, you, can, you can do this the same uh, for, for, the, for the drawings and the paintings of uh, Mark Tobey. And then there is the art of calligraphy in Japanese and Chinese, but Japanese in particular. These are the first one on the left side is dated back in uh, one, uh, 1, 000, uh, sorry, um, 12, uh, around the thir uh, 13th century. The second on the right side is dated back in, even before uh, uh, about the 9th century. So the art of calligraphy is the art of putting together the soul and the mind and the act of your hand on a, on a uh, uh, in an action uh, which is much more, uh, much less visual uh, and much more connected with what you are feeling inside in that moment. In this searching uh, for new paths about drawing, uh, for sure, uh, Elisitsky, his Brown series, uh, is, is a very important step. And I, I just wanted to mention this uh, and to present a couple of examples. Uh, I have to say that in this research, uh, I feel very important uh, avoiding the formal, uh, the formal representation of architecture. Even if uh, the formal, so this is one of my drawings. This was the first time that I realized that I was going in, some, in, in a direction that I was searching. Um, the formal drawing, uh, is something that can be completely uh, controlled by the, co the computer. That's why I'm not anymore interested in the formal evolutions of the, of the drawing. And I'm much more interested in the informal and abstract evolution because the abstraction, the irrational, the uh, not logical, they are uh, unknown paths for the computer. So this is a very nice quote I got just, uh, well, uh, ch chance, chance operations, this is a quote by Stephen Hall. Chance operations uh, open many paths to the composer, John Cage, my next door neighbor, who lived in the Sixth Avenue, on Sixth Avenue in New York. Cage used chance protocols to escape the tyranny of the ego. He recommended unintentional acts as key aspects of his method. So this, uh, the tyranny of the ego, I think this quote, this quote is very, for me, is very important because it, it opens uh, to the so-called the automatic drawing uh, as a, an important act uh, in the process of drawing uh, relating with the computer era, the computer uh, years, uh, where, where the computer, everything related with computer means uh, a, a sort of hyper rationality of drawings uh, and uh, productions. Uh, uh, so I started to make this series of drawings uh, in, a, in a, uh, trying to be the less rational it was possible uh, in making these lines. Uh, and, and they, they had, I started to make a lot of drawings, uh, uh, avoiding every kind of rulers, every kind of uh, uh, dimensions, everything just uh, putting together everything I presented so far. And um, these are a series of little drawings uh, in which I put uh, the colors uh, itself. The color is, is a very important component in this kind of research for me. Um, this series of drawings uh, uh, landed, uh, and I'm going to to end this uh, lecture, uh, to a series of drawings like this, and there are many others, but uh, I started to uh, find a sort of dialogue, uh, uh, look, I was looking for a dialogue with the computer, with the, with the, with the computer, with the software, with the CAD, and, and possibly with the CAM process, uh, um, going back to my interest for the physical production of architecture. So these were a series of, series of drawings. In some cases, I started to use a ru uh, little rulers, uh, just a little bit. You see how, how, what kind of magnet is the formal 
whenever, even if you want to be completely informal, uh, in the end, something comes out. Uh, and of course, I'm conscious, I was conscious that something was coming out, but it's literally a sort of magnet. Uh, and I started to uh, develop them uh, with, the, with the use of computer and with the use of softwares. Uh, and uh, as well as uh, if you have a, a 3D model, you can change immediately the point of view of your perspective. Uh, and this was in, in, unimaginable 25 years ago. You had to make a perspective. It was really complex. Uh, and if you made a mistake, uh, that was, uh, you couldn't change the point of view. You had to start back everything. It is the same from, from the graphical point of view. You can completely change the mood of, this, uh, of these uh, drawings with sometimes barely simple acts, let's say. Sometimes can be very complex act. Changing completely the kind of uh, um, feedback that, that this drawing give to you, even the weights in the single parts of the drawings. And I made this for each one of the drawings, hand drawings that you have seen at the beginning. So I go a little bit faster. Um, putting them in a sort of, uh, I, I, start, I, I called this uh, the um, how the, out there series because I started to think about these places uh, somewhere else. I don't know where, but somewhere else, uh, this series of, uh, let's say architecture, but they are completely logical, illogical, sorry. You, if you see the lines, uh, they, 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 they relate, they are freehand, they were freehand lines, then they were converted in uh, uh, CAD lines, and then, but they, they, they don't match, they don't match physically with the, with the reality. And you see the, the once again, uh, the, the, um, the formal, uh, it appears, and I mean, I accept that, uh, it's not a problem. It's, uh, it's just that the starting point is very important for me, trying to avoid the formal point of view. Now, the, the ending point of this um, lesson is about Rome, because there is, no, I think, uh, I'm not sure, but I think there is no other place in the world in which you can really think and talk about the intangible reality. Uh, Rome is the center of uh, an entire religion. Uh, Rome is the center of uh, an entire culture. Uh, Rome is a city in which wherever you walk, uh, you are, whether you're conscious or not, uh, you, are, you have two or three or four levels under your feet walking around the center of Rome. And you know that there is this reality, but you, in the meantime, you, you clearly know that uh, it will stay there most probably because you, no one will never excavate under the Spanish steps, just to make an example. And we know because also it's happened this to my, uh, during my profession, we found a villa in the building out of uh, just uh, uh, close to the Spanish steps. So, and you, you discover an entire world there, but it's, it's intangible. It's a, it's a sort of, you are conscious about that uh, and that's it. So this is a statue at, right at the entrance of Rome, in the historical center of Rome, in Piazza del Popolo. As soon as you enter the, the gate in Piazza del Popolo, that was the northern entrance to Rome, the most ancient entrance, not the most ancient, but the most important ancient, uh, the most important, sorry, gate in the city of Rome uh, uh, around the walls. So this is the first statue that you find on, on your left side. And it's such a beautiful statue. It's, it represents the spring. And it was made by a, a, a a sculpture who is not famous is Guacha, Gua, Guan, I think it was, there's a mistake in the word. I don't remember his, word, his name, but I think it's Guaccarini or something similar. And it's such a beautiful statue of a woman representing the spring. That's why she's taking off the clothes because it's turning on a good season. And this was Rome during the COVID. I had one opportunity to move around Rome in one occasion. I was allowed to do that. And this was a, a completely surreal moment for everywhere in the world. But in this moment, everything that you could find around Rome was, were angels, angels everywhere in all the statues that you find on the bridges, on the churches, in the museums, because it was possible to visit some museums with, no, with not the mass of tourists everywhere. This angel on the right side by the, side, by the way, is a beautiful angel, is a model for another angel made of, uh, of marble, made, uh, the model itself was made, was made by Bernini, Gian Lorenzo Bernini. So I thought going back to the annunciation uh, by um, um, Antonello da Messina, the angel is a sort of a medium between the intangible and the physical world. It's a sort of this, the meeting point uh, between, between these two entities. 
and Rome is a perfect moment, uh, a perfect location to investigate all of this. So the last uh, slides uh, are this. This is the historical center of Rome. I tried to recently, a few months ago, I tried to, co to convert, to translate uh, these uh, abstract uh, drawings uh, in a possible real architecture and the opportunity was for a competition in this location this location is uh, was was built in uh, in 1960 for the 17th olympic games this was this is the olympic ex olympic village in in rome and uh, as you see there is a trident here because until the 1960 rome was growing in a in a healthy way let's say uh, so that the trident is the same trident that you find from Piazza del Popolo here. It's not by chance that the Maxi Museum from Zadid is located here and the auditorium from Renzo Piano is located here. So this uh, is a very important location. And I thought, okay, in this competition, I thought to apply these ideas uh, for the Olympic Games. So there was a, it was a competition for a big square. It was a promenade. Uh, and I thought uh, to start uh, in the same way, approaching to the same kind of uh, uh, design, but with the intention of building this. Uh, and this came, uh, the, 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 ideas, the idea came from uh, uh, the, the function of this area. In 1960, uh, it was a place for the athlete, athletes and, um, and, uh, and uh, all the sports were played uh, around the, these areas. Uh, so uh, leaving a trace of everything has been played uh, during the 60s there, 1960 was just uh, 15 years after the end of the Second World War in Rome. So you can imagine what kind of importance had that kind of opportunity uh, for Rome at that moment. So I wanted to, to give a shape to these traces, uh, uh, to these uh, actions uh, and uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, mobility and uh, aim to life. And these traces uh, uh, was converted in a, in a drawing and this drawing was converted in, uh, in CAD and so on, uh, renderized. And this was the, the final step of this. Uh, uh, of course, this competition didn't move on <laughs> with prizes, but uh, I, I wish I could and I hope I will have the opportunity to develop this in physical mo models because I know how to move on in this direction. And this is the final slide. The final slide shows one of the drawings I presented the, at the beginning of the last series of actions of drawings. And once one direction is this one, uh, which is a sort of render and uh, render expression, rendering expression of the potential of this architecture. And the other one is a physical potential. So we, uh, together with a collaborator, call, uh, his name is Giacomo Sanna, uh, it, we started to make a series of um, uh, physical models. Uh, this is very recent, so I, I don't have more than this to present. But the, uh, in order to giving a shape, to give a shape to the this intangible, and to 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 continue the the walk, to continue the the path, uh, and uh, without pretending an answer, as uh, as said uh, um, Peter Baldwin. So there is an explanation about Voronoi diagram. Probably several of you know what is the, this. Uh, is a uh, geometrical way to, to, to create physical models. So this uh, is a way for me to investigate the physical three-dimensional potential of everything I said uh, so far. So that's the end of uh, the lecture and I hope I stayed within the timing uh, and uh, I don't know. Thank you very much uh, for your attention and uh, every single uh, interest uh, or question is more than welcome. Wow, Fabio. Marvelous, intangible journey of collated realities uh, um, this evening. Fantastic. Thank um, you so much. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, thanks for taking us on a, on a journey like this. Um, I would like to, to open the questions to to all the guests. May I go first? Go ahead, Emery. Thank you. Uh, hi, Fabio. This, uh, this presentation was very fabulous. 
Um, Thank you very much. So, <laughs> um, my name is Emery. I'm in B's class um, in B's studio. And I really enjoyed the emphasis you brought uh, to hand drawing and how important it is in, a, um, in the creative process and the arts and how what's there isn't always what gives you the, the what represents the feeling, right? Like, you know, when you showed the paintings and how you couldn't ever capture uh, the feeling you felt um, when when you were in the, I think, Duomo, was it? Yeah. Um, so, and I truly, I kind of relate to that because, so I work with like, you know, I just do portraiture, but I do relate to your creative process in terms of hand drawing and how I just, you know, it literally does connect your heart with your hand. It's, it's, it's crazy, but it does. Um, and with, you know, I also try to depict architectural, um, you know, spaces with drawing, but I can never just draw what's there. I just get really abstract and really fast. I get really impatient. It's, it's, it, there's a very crazy contrast between the two. So my question to you is, um, uh, you've described your incredible process here and it, it, it flew, uh, I mean, it f flowed very um, smoothly. So that was great. My question is, uh, are there any theory that you would recommend or a theory like books that have influenced this entire creative process? Because I would like to um, get into that, indulge in that. <laughs> Well, uh, Emre, I hope I spell in the right way. Emre, thank you very much for your question. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> thank you very much for your question and also for your very kind uh, feedback. Very kind, really. Um, well, uh, to be honest, uh, um, I, I am going to, to give you some um, examples of books uh, uh, which uh, probably will not be um, uh, exactly what you expect. Uh, one book, uh, um, for example, uh, which I found really beautiful, was written by a psychologist uh, and philosopher, James Hillman. Um, his uh, bestseller book was uh, uh, The Soul's Code. And I, I suggest to read as well that book because it's a, it's a beautiful, really beautiful book. He wrote uh, uh, some other books, uh, one in particular, I don't remember exactly the title, but it, saw, it was something like The Soul of the Place or something around The Soul of the Place. Uh, and he investigated uh, uh, the same approach that he had uh, towards the human being, uh, relating it, that kind of approach with the uh, physical process of the context where you live uh, or where you are where, where you move on so um this uh, that that thinker uh, uh, if i'm not wrong he died uh, pretty recently um, james hillman uh, was a was really a great mind and i think it he can open a lot of paths in uh, in your personal research there are other books uh, which uh, uh, I was really influenced by uh, one of them uh, is a, a beautiful book uh, written on water by uh, um, Stephen Hall, not because of what is written, even if every, uh, also what is written is very interesting, but there is an entire series, a series of beautiful, beautiful uh, watercolors. Every one of us knows uh, no, uh, he, he, his watercolors, but when you see all this uh, series uh, one after the other one and you think about this process because he, he tend he tends to make a drawing every morning as soon as he wake up uh, uh, and uh, this act uh, puts together the unconscious world uh, when you dream uh, with the daylight uh, with the day living so in that moment uh, is a good moment for himself uh, in order to put aside uh, the the uh, the tyranny of the ego as he said uh, so the, that that's a beautiful series so my my suggestion uh, I, I, I could suggest you for example a beautiful beautiful book for me of photographs uh, 
by Steve McCarry as well. So they are not straight to the point. I'm conscious about that. But in the meantime, uh, this is something that I also suggest to my students. Uh, I think that in this kind of researches, uh, it's very important to, to move towards different streams, uh, uh, sometimes even avoiding architecture. I have to, to, I have to give a, a very short example of what I'm saying. Uh, I am uh, uh, part of what I call the, the, the El Croqui generation. Uh, I, I was studying architecture during the 80s, uh, late 80s and early 90s. Uh, and uh, on the El Croqui magazine, uh, they started to uh, present a series of architects, very young architects like uh, Zaha Hadid, the Cop Emil Blau, uh, Cop, um, Morphosis, uh, Tom Main, and so on. And I remember the first drawings I told the, I said that I was struck in particular by the, the process of uh, copy Meblau, but when I started to see the first drawings uh, and paintings by Zaha Hadid, I, I thought uh, they were coming from Mars uh, or somewhere else, even farther than Mars. I, 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 there, were, there was no way to understand those drawings. There was no way. So I tell this very little uh, <laughs> funny example. I started, as soon as I found something uh, so interesting, so, so different, uh, I started to search, to, uh, tried to understand that. This happened years later with the drawing of Perry Cooper. <laughs> I said, because I, I see that Perry is here. Um, I, I think it was, I don't remember which year it was, but I was in London and I found a beautiful exhibition of his uh, uh, drawings. And once again, year after, years after the, the drawings and paintings of, of Zadid, I thought, okay, I don't understand anything about these drawings, uh, so this must be a, a cool one again. <laughs> and I thought <laughs> I have to start to, to, to learn something about this process uh, for sure, because if I, I mean, you know, when, when the people is divided between two different entities, when you, if you find something that you don't understand, uh, someone goes on, in the other direction, someone else try to enter in this direction and to understand it. Uh, and if you start to, to try to understand this, uh, it opens a lot of paths, a lot of doors. Uh, and it's very interesting, even if it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, so uh, my invitation is, uh, try, uh, what can I tell you? R read the books like, for example, uh, Italo Calvino's uh, uh, The Invisible Cities uh, as well. Uh, or the American lessons. Uh, so this kind of uh, side books, uh, uh, rather than uh, the main books uh, related with the profession of architecture. This is my, my, my suggestion is uh, open your mind to a lot of different arts, a uh, lot, lot of different kind of exp cultural expressions. Uh, and, uh, and then try to involve them uh, when you find something interesting uh, somehow. I can tell you that for me, for example, music, I could suggest some, some uh, uh, CDs and uh, albums, uh, very important uh, in the whole process. So, Thank you so I, much. I, I, hope, I totally I, agree with that. I, I hope I, under, uh, I, exp uh, I answered in the right way for you. <laughs> yes, uh, I noted everything down. Thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure. Fabio, it's Perry. <laughs> Ciao, Perry. Really good to meet you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very good. much for being still uh, here. <laughs> a pleasure. You're infectious, Fabio. I haven't met you properly, but there's an infectious nature to what you do. Um, and I wondered a, a, a bunch of things I made notes about, but I wondered, um, I'm really interested in the ways in which you use historical references. Um, and I wondered if there was any interest in your part to go back and remake some of those references, whether it's Damascena or Picasso or any number of, um, to Fabioize um, the references that, you're, that you've been up to as a, as a form of didactic, maybe an, even instructional um, conversation where normally what we do is we learn from the masters, but we seldom do we remake the masters and I wondered if that would be an interesting, I would like, you, like to see you do that, um, where you remake uh, Pollock in the guise or, or Mark Toby in the guise of Fabio. But the question I really wanted to ask was, um, you live and have grown up in a place where figurative architecture 
between, between Rome and Florence, figuration is probably as strong as any place in the world. And you see your work progressively moving towards a kind of an Eastern sensibility to do with intangibilities, the disappearance of the horizon, the lack of figuration, critical fragments. And I wonder if you could just for a moment, just reflect on what appears to be um, a cutting of the umbilical cord in a way um, from figuration and from the picture plane and so on, the things which are so rich in both the city of Rome and I would say Florence in particular, but now this movement to the intangible, the invisible, the kind of gradational atmosphere rather than the certainty of the horizon and the picture plane and so on. There's a kind of philosophical, ethical sort of dimension as you, it feels like you're moving, I don't know, to, it, feels, it feels like really Eastern tendencies to me. Basho comes to mind and just vague clues about what might be possible rather than figuration and completion and the certainty of the presence of things. I wonder where that comes from. Where, where does the, it's not a drift, but you see a kind of migrational logic in some of what you're doing. Whoa. <laughs> The deeply, deeply interesting, uh, and uh, I was sure about that. <laughs> um, it's a it's a series of deeply and challenging, interesting, uh, um, let's say, considerations uh, and uh, and questions. Um, well, you notice that uh, uh, the 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 last project I presented was outside the historical center. Right. Uh, this uh, it, it it's uh, in uh, I've never done a drawing uh, of this let's say researching drawings uh, in this uh, uh, con um, uh, located in the historical center of Rome, and this as uh, it's uh, it's really part uh, it's my choice uh, it's it's my choice I have this magnet uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's almost a physical magnet the whole the whole historical center of Rome if I if I go go out from my house here in this moment uh, and I go. Uh, I, it takes ten minutes to arrive to the historical center. So, uh, it's it's a it's a physical magnet. It's a psychological magnet. Uh, this means that uh, I avoid completely, uh, as a purpose, a personal purpose, uh, to put my drawings uh, and my let's say architectures or inferior architectures uh, in the historical center of Rome. Um, my intention is clear. Uh, I want to avoid, uh, um, I want to relate, uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm able about that, but I want to relate uh, with, the, with the intangible of Rome and with the, with the intangible, powerful uh, um, history of Rome uh, and, uh, and culture and the art and so on, uh, talking about that language uh, rather than uh, entering in that language. Mm -hmm. um, so, 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 just to make an example, the contemporary use of English is what was the ancient use of Latin. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, the architecture itself uh, is a, is a, is a, it's a medium of self-expression, and uh, like words, like drawing, and so on. Uh, and by the way, even the use of uh, drawing uh, uh, in architecture in such a structured way is so recent because it comes from uh, historically speaking, it comes from the Renaissance. So, uh, I, I, I'm again, I'm I'm uh, I'm very interested in uh, getting out from the world where I live and when I grew up. Uh, in order to relate back with with these places uh, with a different points of view with a different po point of thinking before then view and uh, for sure the uh, the the, um, uh, the philosophies the, the the eastern philosophy far east philosophies for example uh, they give uh, a very important and powerful ingredient uh, in this process, uh, or, or at least this is my 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 thinking. Uh, this is my thought. Uh, they can help so much because they 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 give you an alternative path. Another alternative path uh, could be, for example, uh, psychology. 
uh, psychology is uh, something, I mean, it, it helped the, the, the history of the art, uh, of the figurative art uh, after the invention of photography in mm -hmm. finding new roots uh, and finding new explanation of, the, of an hidden world in that occasion. So, uh, but it was existing, or, or, or at least uh, it, it, it could be demonstrated that it existed. So um, this, is, this is the kind of uh, tension. I mean, the point is that, the basic point is this. We, we can control everything about the figurative process with the computer. The, we, it's clear now. So like Antonello and Messina, we was able to do everything with the perspective, with the knowledge of the painting techniques from the Flemings and so on. Yeah. What's the next step? The next step is that in this moment, in this historical moment, we know we are able to do whatever we want uh, from mm -hmm. a geometrical point of view with the computer. So we, with our mind, we can move in directions which can be an alternative and partner of the computer. They, they can collaborate on the same level. Do, do, I don't know if it makes yeah. sense what I'm saying, but yeah. they, are, they are two su such powerful uh, tools. Uh, this hyper-rationality on one side and the illogical, think about the illogical, for example. Yeah. Sure. The illogical is not part of the whole process of the computer process. It yeah. can't be absorbed by the computer process. Yeah. Yeah. So I w I'm searching. I started from this research from this point of view, and I'm searching in this direction. What is the illogical, how the illogical process can, di can find a dialogue with the, with the hyper-rationality of uh, the computer and CAM and CAD the process, for example. Yeah. What, what path can they, they can connect? So... I don't know if uh, I answered uh, yeah. to all your question. I mean, part of what that stimulates for me, and thank you for the answer and for the amazing work, Fabio. It's you're off the charts, talented intellectually, and also the work that you make. But I wondered if you're if you're actually interested in almost um, materializing the construction lines of spatial realms, or the construction lines, or the jigs, or the rigs, which make up digital space rather than the figures, almost a kind of shuttle space in which you you point to the architecture. It has a quality that you're pointing to spatial setups by articulating almost ventriloquistically or something about how they came into being. You're articulating or making vivid the possibility of the arrival, let's say, of architecture. It has a sort of quality that the architecture is almost seeking to be more drawing-like or more like the construction lines of a drawing, which is super compelling to me. I don't know whether this is what, you, whether you're up to this or not, but it has this invisibility or the impossible, the intangible seems to want to point to the architecture to build clues about what it might become without actually articulating it fully as a, as a, as figuration. So it's just, op, sorry, just observations are just causing me to, allowing me to think about a bunch of things. Also, in well, to manual drawing or you know manual drawing in the digital realm which i think is super super interesting in your thinking well actually i i i i pointed on the fact that uh, at the beginning of the lecture on the fact that for me architecture is uh, i started from this point of view at the very beginning architecture was just uh, something built so yeah. this, uh, this is my starting point, whether I like or not. I like this, yeah. but it's a matter of fact. Uh, this is, I, I said before, I, it's not a statement. It's a matter of fact. I started with this specific point of view. So I, did, I didn't lose this, uh, and I'm very much interested in this. Also because for many years, I just worked as a, a, an architect on the field. Yeah. I worked, just to make an example, I didn't mention this, but for many, many years, I made design of uh, harbor designs, harbor, harbor areas of cities. Mm -hmm. And when you relate with the seaside, you yeah. relate with a, a surface, uh, which is a, uh, is a moving surface, and in the meantime, is an homogeneous surface. So you, re you have a relation with a kind of geometries, which is completely, this is on, on my personal experience, is completely different from the kind of geometries that you would adopt in the physical land um, for many reasons. Uh, so um, it's very difficult to explain this, but for sure, my intention uh, is moving towards uh, a building of this uh, somehow and somewhere. Uh, I don't have any clue about how and about yeah. where, 
And to be honest, uh, in this moment of the walk, let's say, I'm not even interested about these two answers, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, I'm interested in finding uh, new little steps uh, in these directions. Yep. Uh, so uh, the intangible uh, for me, uh, I mean, uh, maybe you have seen uh, uh, as soon as it started uh, the, 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 the big uh, pandemic, uh, you saw the Pope uh, uh, walking towards a church. Yes. Now, that was a, such a powerful image. Uh, you don't need to be a Catholic or to be yeah. a believer or something else. That was uh, one single man rep representing something, uh, something uh, uh, intangible going towards against uh, something intangible, which is a virus. Yeah. In that moment, uh, that single man uh, was, was a sort of medium between these two entities. Uh, An angel. And, uh, yeah, exactly. And that, that, these two entities, uh, I mean, we all know very clearly what is the weight. Uh, you can measure, measure the weight of the intangible of the virus, uh, right? Yeah you can't measure the weight of God, of the sense of God, of the yeah. sense of a religion. Yeah. But these are just two of the voices of the intangible. Because again, mm -hmm. again uh, if you talk about uh, uh, art, art, what is art? Art is something intangible. Uh, you can see the expressions of art in different places in, or culture in general. And Rome is a sort of... Uh, 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 I can say, I can say, the target point of all these different forces. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Is is the epicenter, let's say, yeah. of yeah, all yeah. these different forces. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm quite sure that uh, they could cause a, an earthquake, and possibly it would have to be a good earthquake. You understand what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I don't know where <laughs> so right. far. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I hope I answered to you beautiful yeah, questions. And, and totally, totally uplifting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I need, I need to see you and be in the rest in your work today in particular. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I have to work. say, I have this is I have to say that the, once again, this is an opportunity incredible uh, created by Bea. Uh, this is, I mean, yeah, this absolutely. Bea is a, is amazing what she's, she's doing. A gem. Yeah, she is a diamond. Uh, yeah, really, really, kind. really. <laughs> No, it's a matter of fact, Bea. This is so so wonderful, and I, you know, I I, I really think of uh, what the students, um, you know, are taking from this, and how much uh, all these talks are are opening their horizons into uh, uh, different views of the world. And and we were having this this chat before we st you started your talk about. The idea of architecture, you know, and, and you know, what what is architecture really? Is it just just a built form? Um, and and for teachers that, that teach, especially in the undergraduate uh, um, program, there is this you know sense and obligation that you you have to to to, to teach how to build. Um, but I, I, I truly believe that architecture and, and the way I, I envisage, you know, my edge, it, it is as an education more than as a trade. Yes, um, you, you do teach them how to do things, how to build, but the, the, the possibilities of, of, of architecture uh, go beyond then the profession of, of becoming an architect. Uh, it is a, a state of mind, uh, and it's about space more yeah, than it's sure. a, more, is, sure. more than it is about building. Um, yeah, so it's it immense. Is. So it's immense, and it's intangible, and it's tangible, and it's visible, and it's invisible, and it has all these dualities and juxtapositions that that uh, um, that it's like walking in Rome. You know, no matter how old you are, uh, no matter if you're an artist or if you're an accountant, you have this feeling of sometimes you can't understand what you're feeling. Uh, uh, and I believe that that happens to, to, to everyone. Uh, it's just it's just impossible uh, if it doesn't. It's, it's a museum <laughs> without a ceiling. That's how my son actually... Uh, when he was five and he went to Rome, that's what he felt. He said, it's like a museum without a ceiling. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and we thought it was fantastic. 
<laughs> well, to, well, I have to say that uh, the uh, playing and uh, drawing uh, with children put yourself. I used to do this uh, with some knees. I have wonderful knees, uh, they, and they like to draw. And uh, sometimes I draw with them on their drawings. Uh, they put uh, really in contact uh, with the logical world, uh, and it works perfectly. Yeah. Hi, Fabio. Yes, Jackie. Hi. Hi, Ciao, Fabio. Jackie. How are you? I know you? Jackie. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Fine, thank um, you. I thought that your presentation was fantastic. It was historical. It was creative. <laughs> it was imaginative. It's, it's too much. And, thank you very much. And, uh, although I'm going into what we call lockdown from tomorrow, yeah. I'm so pleased to have... Um, listen to this presentation because it's going to give me a sense of I'm already thinking I'm already um, thinking about why not take a, a pen and try to to draw something on a piece of paper who knows what what may come out of that so what I would really like to see from you in the future is maybe if you could have like some exhibitions in different cities I think that would be fantastic because what you create, I don't know if you know Stephen Wilcher. No, no, Stephen I'm sorry. Wil Stephen Wilcher is, um, he does drawings and he's very well known all over the world. He's, um, I think he has some kind of disability. I'm not sure. I, I can't remember exactly what, but he does drawings. Um, well, let's say on the lines of, of or you do drawings on the line of what he does. And it's okay. actually what he what he's creating, what you're actually creating is um it's like if you if you visit the city, for instance, Rome, because you know I, I've lived there and you, you know me well and so on. Yeah. What I see in your 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 designs is that I don't need to to have a put a picture. What I can actually take is is your 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 drawings give me that picture. <laughs> if I don't need to, to have a photo then, your your drawings can give me that picture because it's so detailed to the smallest small actually in one of your um drawings before, I was actually seeing the image of a of a person on a wall and, and, and it was I could because it's so fine, but I could actually see that face and that is very you, a unique thing to do to be able to give the person who's looking at your drawing that to be part of that drawing and that Thank is you. what actually I've always said to you that I think that Thank you're you. incredible <laughs> and Thank I don't you think that you get the recognition that you deserve and I hope that with this this will be maybe one of the platform platforms for you <laughs> to start getting that recognition <laughs> And I wish you thank luck. You, thank you very much, Jackie. Thank You're much. always very kind. Always very, very <laughs> kind. Thanks so much. Oh, take care. I, I, I do appreciate if I, if, if I can give back uh, the kind of feeling that I, I, I feel when I'm uh, in, in one place, uh, wherever it is, uh, uh, if I can transmit and share this uh, with yeah. some, uh, someone else, wherever it is. Uh, uh, that's why I was uh, mentioning uh, this important part, the component of the, the act of drawing. As, a, as, as an act of narrative act, uh, as a sort yes. of storytelling. Yes. So, so you, can feel the, you can feel something similar uh, so, uh, when you read a book, a beautiful book yes. about a place. Uh, you can feel yourself, your emotions located in that place. So my, well, let's say I pretend, this doesn't mean that I can do it, but I pretend to, to try to move in this direction with the drawings. Yes. And I actually felt that um, during your presentation. Thank you and very I would much. Like to thank you for that. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. I do okay. appreciate. So. Thanks so much, Jackie. Okay. I would like to say just one thing about uh, to to Emre, because uh, I remember that I had here one book that I I do like very much by Eva Hess. It's just simply titled Drawing, and this book. Uh, this book is a book that I, I really, uh, I discovered totally by chance. I didn't know Eva S. She, uh, she worked uh, with Albers, uh, so she, 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 she's not living, she's not alive anymore, but she made very interesting drawings uh, uh, in the directions in which uh, I try to move on, to move towards. 
That's wonderful. I, I want to pick up on something that Jackie said. You know, we are entering lockdown tomorrow and your talk was so uplifting, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that we all know now what we need to do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to cope with it, uh, um, which is to embrace your, 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 your drawings and, 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 and try to, to have a go as well. Uh, uh, you know, that there's such a, uh, you know, drawing is such a amazing medium for, for, for our emotions, whatever they are. Um, it, it's just so uh, absolutely um, marvelous, Fabio. Oh, thanks so much anything. thanks so much i'm really glad about that thanks so much it was not just that it was also the the art history uh lesson <laughs> <laughs> you know you know well packed uh, <laughs> and collated with, with the drawing that uh, uh was just so wonderful it was so wonderful you, know, is you, it... you took us around the world <laughs> Actually, it's very different. It's very difficult to avoid uh, the the history of the art or, or or the architecture being here in Rome. It's really difficult. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, even if I wanted this, it's, it's very difficult to avoid it. <laughs> and you just can't help but like, drop names of your masters, isn't it? It's just there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Do we have any more questions? Are we have? Oh, there's oh Peter. Peter. Good evening. Hi, Fabio. How are you? Ciao, ciao. I'm very well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, and, and thank you for such a wonderful lecture. Um, thank you so much. I think it was it was utterly enthralling, and as B says, utterly uplifting, which is uh, welcome news in trying times. Uh, I I wondered if I I mean I, I <clears throat> maybe it's a maybe it's a half formed thought. I'm not really sure it's fully a question yet, but it it strikes me that. Uh, that the work is increasingly exploring drawing as a liminal territory and it's distancing itself from uh, what we might have previously thought of as something which is which is concerned with the phenomena or the phenomenon and is increasingly interested in the noumenon and perhaps perhaps that's the sort of shift uh, that you've presented in these sort of more recent drawings that actually it, it seems fundamentally that you're you're increasingly interested in drawing's capacity uh, to observe the thing that's really there rather than solely the measured or visible. Um, and I think, you know, one of the curious things for me, and, and Nat, Nat Chard is far more articulate about it than I am, when he describes architecture as being a condition of indeterminacy and as being something which exists in the interplay of other things. And it, it just sort of strikes me that that's, I suppose, increasingly the territory that your, your work is occupying. Uh, and I think it's fascinating. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Perry has, has referenced it as, a, as an Eastern thing, but I think it's something that is inherent uh, across the world. I think perhaps uh, it's, just that we're sort of starting to sense these opportunities to reconnect to it in a way that we perhaps haven't since the sort of dominance of the of the gaze of the scene of the visible that, that sort of comes in in the renaissance and i was kind of fascinated to see in, in the earlier stages of the lecture both the reference to things like um some of the the aboriginal paintings the traditions things like the song lines as well um which, uh, which are ways of I suppose communicating the thing itself rather than the thing as it's witnessed. Um, and I, I, I suppose the question, if there is one, is 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 that um, is that or how or um, possibly what are you finding in terms of your design practice in the adoption? Uh, <clears throat> Is there a value to your design practice in the adoption of these more uh, uh, questioning drawing methods uh, rather than the, the kind of the, the, the more uh, illustrative methods, uh, which, which I suppose we've, we've traditionally all held as being 
the way that architects draw. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a challenging uh, question full of uh, uh, really a lot of very good uh, um, considerations and uh, very deep considerations. Uh, uh, first of all, I have to say when I was uh, pre preparing this lecture, I, I thought uh, a lot about your lecture and I thought about, uh, because it was really interesting uh, and it was really straight to the, to the point. And in the meantime, I was conscious about the fact that I was moving uh, up and down, up and down in different locations. So you, you, you presented a, a research uh, which is a sort of hidden uh, passage somewhere and uh, it goes uh, straight to a direction which is very interesting and very powerful. In this case, uh, I, just, I presented the, maybe one step be behind uh, the, the potentials of drawings, or I tried to, pre to present these potentials. And in order to present these potentials, uh, I, I decided to, to, to start from the early stages, uh, demonstrating how much uh, just the, the act of drawing, uh, simply the act of drawing uh, is much, much more ancient uh, than the act of speaking or uh, writing, uh, even, even before then writing. So all putting all together these fields, uh, as you say, when you say it's a liminal, uh, liminal uh, um, condition, uh, this is for sure. It is for sure in this moment. Uh, and uh, um, it requires a new, let me say, figurative uh, uh, approach, which is not still on the on the screen. It's not still uh, at the end of the of, of the walk. Let's say, uh, I mean, uh, it's like if uh, who is moving in these directions? Uh, I'm talking about the second part of the lecture for me and the whole lecture for you. Uh, is moving to uh, is like searching for the beginning of uh, I don't know the Nile River, and they know there is a beginning, uh, but they didn't know where it was and what they found during the the whole uh, the whole path and the whole. Uh, uh, travel so um, it's um, I need this figurative uh, um, uh, let's say feedback uh, much more uh, I think than than what you need this was my impression because of the reason that I mentioned at the beginning I start from the idea that architecture must be built I started this is not my assumption today at all. And when I asked this to, to, your, uh, to you during the, your lecture, I really was curious about this point because uh, having my past uh, with this kind of idea, uh, I was curious if you were putting this idea of the third dimension, physical third dimension, or if you were not interested at all. And um, because I know that for me, it's very important to this approach. So uh, the point is that, uh, one of the points is that uh, uh, we, we, in the last 25 years, uh, we, we have forgotten about the drawing. And it was, it, it was right. I mean, I, I, know, I don't know if it is a legend, but I knew that in the, in, for, for years in, uh, in the Zahadid studio, it was forbidden to leave a paper with a, with a, uh, with a pencil on, on the desk when, when they were working. And I totally, if it is true, whether it, it is true or not, I totally agreed with that. Um, I was completely interested in that direction. But the point is that everything moves on. And moving on, uh, if we demonstrate, as it is true, that uh, the, the, the history of drawing uh, is so powerful, uh, this means that this will start again, uh, and it's going to start for sure. And the point is to understand what is the direction of it uh, and to drive possibly this direction. Uh, so uh, honestly, this um, uh, kind of communication uh, that goes from one point of the globe to another one, uh, that goes from one moment in the history to another one. Uh, so this interaction between different uh, locations and different um, times, uh, uh, all of these aspects uh, moves uh, in one direction, which is uh, uh, now ready to be taken again. 
Because when I presented the virtual house by Peter Eisman, I remember very clearly that that house was presented by Peter Eisman in a, in a, in a, um, um, in a, in a speech he made here in Rome, uh, not only here in Rome, but I attended it, this in Rome. And he said, for the first time uh, this year, I think it was in Columbia University, we are going to have, a, a, I think he called that a free paper free paper course in architecture, if I'm not wrong, something like that. So for the first time, they approached architecture only with computer. And that was in the mid of 90s. So I think now is definitely the new step. The new step is in this direction and putting together, like for Antonio, Antonio Messina knew everything about perspective. What is the next step? And the next step, Probably he was not even conscious about that. Uh, for sure, he was not conscious about Sigmund Freud uh, discoveries, uh, but he, 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 he knew that there was a, one new dimension, which was not a uh, uh, geometrical dimension. Taken, uh, taken the dimensions and taken the geometrical aspects uh, on the paper, okay, what's next? And this was the position of him in that historical moment after the treaties of Brunelleschi, or well, in particular, Leon Battista Alberti. So I think that in this moment, uh, um, I don't know if I'm answering honestly <laughs> right to, to, to your question. I'm sorry, maybe I went out of the, of the path. Um, Carry on, can... keep going, keep going down the path. The path is fascinating. <laughs> no, I, I remember when I saw your your your, your works, uh, and I I, uh, I I wrote you that a, a possible third dimension could be, and I sent you a, 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 an image of an artist. I don't even remember the name of the artist, but uh, um, this is my personal need, and and I have to relate with this need, and I'm also honestly I'm very interested in relating with this personal need. Architecture is, a, I mean, is a, is a, is, a, is an important art, but it, it entered in the in the among the arts, figurative arts uh, related with the drawing during the Renaissance. So it's a pretty recent entrance uh, in the figurative arts. Um, now, what's going on now? That's why I'm interested in everything is not figurative for this reason, because everything was, I mean, the big uh, discoveries in the last century were for me for me for my research were in the field of uh, uh, informal abstraction and so on that uh, that's why i relate with the the the, the, the uh, jackson pollock or mark tobey and so on uh, um, but i mean this is uh, I, I think this is the the new path uh, or for me, it's the most interesting path to follow in this moment. If, I, if we are talking just about research, but when I, when I talk about research, I talk about research towards a practical, functional, structural meaning of it. So this is this for sure, I say. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I will never be able to build this, but I know that uh, I would be able to do this. I would be uh, uh, able to, to to move in this direction. This doesn't mean that uh, this would be successful. This is another point. Uh, makes sense what I'm saying. Absolutely, Fabio, and and and, and you know, um, thank you for a wonderful and enlightening answer there. I, I think it is that, that curious question for me, though. Perhaps as, as someone that does exist a a little bit more on, I sit a little bit more on the fence than you do. I, I'm not so sure. For me, it needs to have the third dimension in every instance. Um, but, but, but I think it's fascinating to see how this is uh, directly manifesting in uh, or, or, or how it's beginning to manifest in terms of your thinking uh, of, of a structural third dimensional manifestation of architecture. The one last, I would like just to tell you one thing. When I, when, when I presented the, the, the drawing of Michelangelo, he was 85 years old. Uh, and he made this drawing uh, for a church here in Rome. It's called the San Giovanni Fiorentini. And uh, in that church, they worked uh, Antonello da San Gallo, uh, sorry, um, Antonio San Gallo. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, the, many architects were involved, even Borromini at a certain point. And Michelangelo made five drawings. Uh, and the drawings that I presented here is one drawing in which you literally can see all the different thoughts he had during the design of that church. Then it was not built, but you can imagine uh, the, from the plan what uh, it would 
would have been able to build uh, and it, it would have been something completely different from the church but it would it would have been another masterpiece for sure and you can see how many times he erased and he put a white layer and draw uh, he has drawn again on that layer so somehow this is something that i am expecting now not from myself of course and i, I definitely i'm not comparing anything i'm just saying that somewhere around uh, this is the time uh, to find uh, an alternative way of researching a, a kind of space uh, which in that time that was uh, the, the 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 edge of the research in in the hands in the hands of a man of 85 years old Oh, as, I, as I keep telling Brian, age is just a number. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> or, um, Keith, or Keith Richard says that he's, he's not getting older, he's just evolving. <laughs> <laughs> Fabio, thank you so much. My pleasure, my, really my pleasure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm very glad if we stay in contact for all these things. I look forward to it. Wonderful. Is that, do we have any more questions in the panel? I don't think so. Let me just check if there's any chat note. No, I don't think there is. Well, Fabio, um, marvelous. Thank you oh, inspiring, much. provocative, fantastic, uh, um, just all in, all in one, <laughs> uh, in one go. Um, Multidimensional. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we have something from Julia that says, thank you for your presentation. Many thanks to Julia. Uh, it was amazing, indeed. Um, so if we don't have any more questions, um, we'll sadly um, close here. Um, I, I just want to thank you for, for um, taking time and, and contributing for, for the ArchiZoom. Um, um, I'm, I'm so happy that, you know, um, we can reach uh, your words uh, uh, through this channel uh, and especially for the students uh, in the panel um, to allow themselves to, to, to you know, wanted to test and, and learn new things. Yes, go on. I, no, I, I do hope for the students uh, that uh, this could uh, uh, lead to some new ideas uh, and bring some new ideas uh, to their res personal researches. Uh, as you know, I teach and uh, I do feel very much this aspect. Uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of my students already follow you on Instagram, <laughs> but if they don't, you I, will I've have... noticed. I've noticed that I use a lot <laughs> for Instagram. I've noticed there were several new entrants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so if if you don't, you know, you just wait for for the the the, the bell starting to ring. Um, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Fabio. Um, and thanks to uh, you, Ben. Wonderful, uh, magical, uh, and really, uh, it's it's so right on timing before we we embark again in 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 the unknown. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, for a lockdown from from tomorrow. Although it's really not affecting everyone, apparently. So, you know, Finger, fingers crossed for everyone uh, and stay yeah, safe, every one of you. It's very important that. Uh, um, thank you, everyone, for zooming in. Um, keep safe. Wear a mask so we can get <laughs> this done, <laughs> you know. Um, and again, Fabio, thank you so much. Uh, um, thank you. And, and just keep posting your marvelous work. Um, from photos to music to drawings, <laughs> all is so so welcome. It's pretty diffi difficult for me to stay on one path. Uh, you you understood <laughs> this. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. It's, as as it should be. As it should be. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for thank you for to, to to everyone. Thank you so much for your interest and your participation. Thank you so much. It was a packed much. a packed room. Packed. <laughs>
Packed. <laughs> no room for any more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank thanks you so a lot, Bea. Stay safe. You too. You too. Thank you. Bye to everyone. Bye. Thank you.